and today I'm going to be doing the bookshelf scavenger hunt challenge. Now I've seen this challenge around everywhere, I absolutely love watching people do this challenge but because I've seen so many of them while I watch the video I sort of look at my own shelves and see which books I would choose for each challenge so if I had the original questions it wouldn't really be that entertaining watching me do it because I know exactly which books I'd choose. So I have edited this challenge slightly and I got you guys or the people over on Twitter to send me challenges of books to find and boy did you not let me down because we have one and a half pages worth of challenges here and I'm so excited to do them. <laughs> I'll leave the latest video I watched of this challenge down below so that you can see the original questions if you want to. Oh and just to let you know I have this bookcase behind me, another bookcase at the other side of the room and three shelves over on that side that you can't see so they won't all be off this shelves, I might be around the room as well. <laughs> but for now, let's get into the video. So the first challenge I have is an author whose initials begin with the same letter. Okay. I've chosen The Born Season by Samantha Shannon because both the names begin with S. This is one of my favourite series. I reread it recently in March, so you probably heard me talk about this in the next two books quite a lot so I'll not go into it too much but it's about a world where clairvoyants exist but being a clairvoyant in London is illegal and Paige Mahoney the main character has to deal with that so yes I would highly recommend this book. Number two is a book spine the same colour as your top. Hmm. I don't know if burgundy is a thing. Let's have a gander. So the book that I've chosen that is the same colour as my top is A Storm of Swords Part 2 Blood and Gold by George R. R. Martin. This is the one, two, three, fourth book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series, at least in these editions because some of them are split into two. But yes, this is the closest I could find. I think it's a pretty close match. <laughs> now I need a title with only five words. No, one, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, one, two, three, no, one, two, three, no, one, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, one, two, three, four, five. A Darker Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab or V.E. Schwab. Again, this is a series I absolutely love. It's about parallel Londons all with a different strength of magic and there are magicians who can travel between these different Londons and a whole lot of crap goes down. <laughs> As I'm filming this I'm currently reading the last one and whew, I'm loving it. A book title with a name in it. I have quite a few I could have chosen for this but I'm going with Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte because this is about a woman called Jane Eyre in case you didn't know and I basically just wanted to show off the pretty cover because it's gorgeous. This was probably the first book that I studied that I didn't end up hating. So, a cover with all the primary colours on it. So that's red, blue and yellow. thought for a moment that I forgot what the primary colours were. Wow. I can't seem to find one. <laughs> oh no. Probably because all the primary colours together look vile. <laughs> In my humble opinion. This is the closest I could find, which is Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jessie Andrews. I read this years ago. It's about two people who befriend a girl with cancer and it's just a story of friendship. But you have the blue, you have the red. Unfortunately, this isn't yellow, but it does have yellow on it. If you see these little bits of yellow, there's more on the back. So I'm saying it counts. <laughs> a cover with a cityscape on it. Why was my first instinct? <laughs> I was going to go and find Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. I don't own that book. Or Lady Midnight. I think it's just because everybody on Twitter is complaining about the cover because, I mean, it is a bit weird, isn't it? 
but I don't own that book and I don't even like Santa Claire books anymore. So I don't know why my first thought jumped to that. I'm going with the entire Anna and the French Kiss series by Stephanie Perkins. I don't normally like cutesy stories but this is actually probably my favourite contemporary. Oscar stop eating things off the floor! But yes, this is my favourite contemporary series. It's one of the very few that is so cringe, I love it. But more importantly, <laughs> on the front cover we have the Eiffel Tower and Paris. I think that's the Golden Gate Bridge. I am really crappy at geography and I can't remember where these are set. So that's another city. <laughs> and also a cityscape on the back of that one too. A book about an animal. I don't get books about animals because they always end up dying or hurt or something and I just cry. <laughs> I'm going with Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them because it's about many animals. <laughs> this is the screenplay version and might not count because technically it's about more humans than animals but if you don't think this one counts, this one definitely does because it's a textbook literally telling you all about animals. Not about one animal, it's about many. And none of them are real. But shh. A book with an animal on the cover. Why well, you guys are really into animals? <laughs> um. <laughs> Oscar, what are you warbling at? Need an animal. Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin. This is about a parallel universe where Hitler won the war and there's a motorcycle competition where the winner gets to meet Hitler and shake hands with him and everything and the main character wants to enter the competition, win the race, meet Hitler and assassinate him. So I would highly recommend this book. I still need to read the second one but I did love this one and I'm hoping to get to the second one soon but as you can see there is a wolf silhouette on it. A book with a rainbow. Oh no. <laughs> now you'd think that rainbows would be on like contemporary books and I don't have that many of them, so. I'm going to um, cheat with this one because Fangirl by Rainbow Rowl. There's a rainbow on it. Rainbow Rowl, right there. Right there. <laughs> I know it's not a technical rainbow, it's not the image, but it has a rainbow on it, so I'm counting it. <laughs> a cover with a complete per per bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> Okay. A cover with a complete person on it. Why your face is such a big deal? So I'm going to go with Prisoner of Night and Fog by Anne Blankman because the main character is very obviously seen on the front running away. <laughs> This is actually historical fiction and it's about Hitler's niece, how she has always idolised him because he's her uncle and then she starts realising just who he is and what he does. So I would highly recommend this one, I do really like it, I really wanted to get my hands on the second book but I can't do that yet. Now I need a cover with someone who looks like you. Oh no. <laughs> Whenever I can, I avoid getting book covers with faces on because I don't like them. So how am I meant to find someone that looks like me? Uh. For this one, I'm going with The Creeper Man by Dawn Kertigich. I know I don't really look like her right now, but I did actually recreate this cover and people were saying that I always remind them of it now, so... I'm going to leave a link to the tweet where I show those pictures down below if you want to check that out. And yeah, this is the closest you're going to get to finding a book that looks like me. <laughs> the next one is a purple cover. That should be easy enough. Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. This is the first book in the Grisha trilogy and it's a very good series. <laughs> While this isn't one of my favourite series, the companion series to this, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom that I absolutely adore along with everybody else. Well I've not read Crooked Kingdom yet but I love Six of Crows so 
A book by someone with your initials. My initials are AW, so. No one's coming to mind off the top of my head. You were so close, Oscar Wilde. Why? <laughs> Apparently, I don't own a book by anybody with the same initials as me. Well, a cover with a blue bird on it. I have quite a few with birds on, but I don't think I've got any blue ones. I found one! The Raven King by Maggie Steve Otter. As you can see it's got a blue and white theme and I'm probably shining that right in your faces from the reflection. <laughs> but there is a little blue bird on it. Yay! Actually there's quite a few blue birds on it. I honestly didn't think I was going to find that one so I am well surprised. <laughs> this is the last book in the Raven Cycle series and I'm sure you've all heard of it because when it was coming out there was so much hype. But yes, I give you the Raven King with all the bluebirds on it. <laughs> a book with the total page number with at least two of the same digits. Nope. Nope. Way! <laughs> I'm going with this edition of The Night Circus by Erin Morganstern, which has 626 pages. This is one of my all time favourite books, as I'm sure you know, because I've mentioned it so many times on this channel already. It's about a magical circus which only appears at night, there's no warnings, it's great. Apparently it's always got my back, because here I was thinking this challenge was going to be impossible. A one word title. So for this one I'm going for Crest by Marissa Meyer. This is the third book in the Luna Chronicles trilogy, which is a series of fairy tale retellings, but mixed with sci-fi. I don't normally like sci-fi, but I do really enjoy the series. I could have gone for any of the books in this series because there's Cinder, Scarlet, Cress and Winter but this is my favourite in the series so I decided to pick it up. A cover with a boy on it. The First 15 Lives of Harry August by Claire North. I've not read this one so I'm not going to be good at explaining what it's about but it has who I presume is Harry August on it. Does it count though because half his face is missing? I mean, if it doesn't count, then you can just have all the entire Harry Potter series. A title beginning with the... Oh, come on. <laughs> the Book Thief. The Song of Achilles. The Hate You Give. The Assassin's Blade. The Wrath and the Dawn. Need I go on? <laughs> A cover with no pictures, just text. I don't think I have any that are just text. Ha! Oh, God. Nail fell over. Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft in this pocket penguin edition which is really cute and small. This is a collection of short stories by H.P. Lovecraft that are all horror related but I have been halfway through this book for a good year or so now. Whoops. <laughs> a book with four or more colours on the spine. That might actually be a problem guys. <laughs> So I didn't want to use one from the same series that I've already used but I'm going to have to go with The Dream Thieves by Maggie Steve Otter because the spines I have only tend to have around three colours on. But this has red for the author's name, white, blue, black, orange and pink. An underrated fantasy. That might actually be the hardest one because I'm pretty sure all, like pretty much every single book I read is hyped which is kind of bad, but I, mm, yeah, I don't know. So this isn't really underrated because there was so much hype for it when it came out, but nobody talks about it anymore. And it kind of makes me a bit sad that. Uprooted by Naomi Novik. This is about a village that has this magician keeping guard over them sort of to keep this magical woodland back that just poisons people. And in exchange for that he takes one of the women from the village every 10 years and just sort of keeps them for 10 years. I ended up really loving this book. I didn't expect to because it was off to quite a slow start but I did end up really loving it. Your last read. That was 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher because I reread it for last week's video. If you haven't seen that then I'll leave a little card thing up here but 
yeah, and I have thoughts. A book with an unusual slash uncommon word in the title. For this one I'm going with A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hassini, just because of the word splendid. You don't often hear that. <laughs> splendid. Oh, that's a fun word to say. Splendid. Splendid. <laughs> this is a great book. It's a hard one to read, like it's not a happy story at all, but if you can read it then I would recommend. It's just splendid. I might try and weave that into like my everyday vocabulary and see if anybody notices. <laughs> we're nearly there guys, we're nearly done. A book with paper thin pages. If only Aqua War was out by now because everybody is ranting about how thin the pages must be. <sighs> Instead I'm going for Outlander by Diana Gabaldon which is a historical fiction crossed with a tiny bit of fantasy and I'm only choosing this because this is nearly 900 pages long. This is 600 pages long, I think. And finally, we have a book with a colour in its title. What's the matter? <laughs> what? Here's Oscar because we haven't seen him in a while. And you're gonna smile. So I'm going to have to go with Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard, which I wish I didn't because I didn't even finish this book. I didn't like it. Read it in January, well, read half of it in January, but yeah. <laughs> so that was the bookshelf scavenger hunt. I really enjoyed doing that. Thank you for sending me the challenges. I actually found that harder than I anticipated. If you've read any of the ones and you like want to shout about them, then please do in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Although I'd be wary of spoilers because I've not read them all and neither have the people in the comments. So be wary of that. As always, I'll leave the links to my blog and social media down in the description box. If you have any suggestions of videos you want to see me do, then do let me know. I'm very open to suggestions and yeah. I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!